Hi everyone. So zoom on in. Okay, so this is the uh, the piece I did the other day, and um, I haven't quite finished it, but I thought I might just quilt the rest of it. And <clears throat> I have a grey thread in the top. Um, sorry, someone keeps sending me messages. And um, I have uh, my machine set on free motion, so it's at zero. And um, I'm going, I have in between, I actually have a bag batting in between and I have the um, backing and I've used, I've cho chosen to use a piece of this which I had um, spare. Um, now the reason why I'm using the back, actually I might even grab a little bit of wadding if I can find some. Yep, here it is. Um, because to put the two layers in works really well. Hi Lynette, welcome aboard. Oops a days, I just pressed a button. <sighs> Hi Debbie, how you going? So I'm going to use the two layers. I'll just move that out a fraction out of the way. Open this up. So this is just a piece of um what they call it um Holly. And I'm just gonna move it that way. I'm just gonna cut it about the same size as the bag batting. I love these scissors. I can't tell you how much I love these scissors. Um, roughly the same. Put that out of the way. Hi Sandy. Hi Gidget. So, just trim that up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to quilt the piece I had a play with yesterday with the painting and I've decided to use two layers and in that case I need to then pick that up. Now it does have a scrim, scrim um, and you'll feel it. So the fluffy side, okay, is the side that does not have the scrim. The scrim is on the other side. It's a rough side. Oh, I love my jack scissors too. And I'm going to place that rough side down. Can't wait to get my line to cut my large roll of bat. Yes, exactly. Perfect for that sort of thing. And put that on there. Now what that does is it makes it a little bit thicker, which means when I lift up my foot, choo -choo, and pop that down. I'm not going to be able to move it. I haven't threaded it yet, so I'll move that in a minute. So what you need to do with your free motion foot is to release it, and you'll watch the foot. If you watch the foot, it will jump up and undo it. There you go. You can see how it raised, and I want it to move. Oops, it goes like a duck on water. I just want it to do it. I might have to adjust it down again, so I'm going to leave that out um, because once I start stitching, that will push the fabric down, which means the, the foot will be too high and I'll need to lower it again. If you have the foot too high, oops, I don't need to trim that. If you have the foot too high, what happens is that you can miss stitches. And uh, it becomes an absolute nuisance. I need to lift that up a bit. I think I can't see. There we go. Oops, got the shakes. There we go. Got it. Even with the shakes, I can thread it. <laughs> okay. Hi, Cherie. Popped your stuff aside today. I remembered. <laughs> Okie dokie. So, first thing I'm going to do is go around this painted one first. So, I'm going to I might pop, hold onto that thread there and just put that needle in the down position. You can see straight away, you can see that it's going to um, give a gap in between. I'm hoping you can see that. I might see if I can just move you in a little bit closer. There we go. You've got, 
your you you've not fixed your ring yet miss no i haven't i haven't i will though i've um just not had the time i, forget, I keep forgetting too and I, that's which is a nuisance so so instantly i can see that there's a big gap there you can see that gap so if i get my screwdriver i can really pop that underneath there so loosen it off so i've done a few little stitches and I'm going to loosen that off and you can see it drop down there, give a little tap, tighten that back up. Okay, you don't want to have um, this massive gap in between. Um, I've done those few stitches so I can trim that off. And because I've got this lovely, beautiful fabric from Adele on the back, the Indigenous fabric, um, being black and white, I've got black in the bobbin. And it is going to hide a multitude of sins because it's so patterned. Um, I have another bobbin ready and waiting to go because I'm not too sure how much is left in it. But um, I am ready to rock and roll. So once you've got your thread sorted, you can then start stitching. Now when you first start, just take it steady. You know, don't sort of go 100 mile an hour trying to... Oh, it's a beautiful material. But you can see how that instantly makes that sit upright. And that's because I've got the two layers, okay? I'm turning it as I go, not while I'm stitching. So I don't um, turn. I will move the fabric, but I don't turn it as such while I'm stitching. So you see how I move the fabric? And I'll reposition my hands to make sure they're in the right position in that throat space pretty much 90% of the time. And come up to here, back where I started, and now I've got that. Look at how beautiful that looks sitting upright like that. It's really, really made it pop. Now, rather than cut off and all that sort of stuff, I'm going to travel back along that line there and then do this one. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to stitch these out. Um, so I'm going to come back in and I'm going to, I'm just going to slow my machine down. She's going a million miles per hour and okay, so she's still going a million miles per hour. <laughs> So if you do free motion on normal machine, do you still have to just like that? Absolutely, Cherie. It is really, re if you've got one of these feet, these um, uh, generic feet, you will need to adjust. And you can see again, I'm getting a bit of a gap. So as I stitch every now and then, just stop, give it a little tap and just re-tighten. Make sure it's screwdriver tight, not finger tight. If you do finger tight, that could very well come out. I'm going to slow it down to about 750 because it wants to go 100 mile an hour. Okay, so once I've got my machine at the right speed, I can then, oh, that's okay, Cherie. Um, I can now just put the foot down flat and so if you've got a, a standard normal machine what you would do would you would set your speed on your little slide on you know the the rabbit and the um, or the hare and the the um, what do they call it the uh, hang on, I just need to just touch that so it's, it knows what it's gonna zoom in on there we go uh, yours has one all Oh, has a little wheel I just turned yes yes mine yes I have that on my genome as well so traveling on I'm going to just follow those lines I drew the other day so then I can decide whether I want to actually leave it as a stitch out or I still want to paint it preferably I'm probably going to leave it as a stitch out now I don't have a join spot between that flower so the flower you probably can't see it very well but I've just done an echo and then I've got a jump so needle up move it along okay 
move it along to your jump to the next spot put your needle down and start stitching you can cut that off later so I'm just following it around literally just sewing the lines I drew the other day Now I'm going to tell you right there and now, it is not easy to follow lines. So if you struggle first time around, hi Chris, don't be surprised, that is normal. So I'm gonna pick that up, jump over the needle down. And you can see that I'm getting a bit of a gap again. It's because it's getting stitched quite heavy in that area. So I'm just gonna let it drop. There we go. And let's go to the next one stitch that around I've gone around twice and then I'm going to lift up my needle and I'm going to maneuver my fabric to here where I want to start in between these two fellas here and I'm going to put my needle oops, down make sure my foot is in the right position down you go Give it a nice tightening and now we're going to start off and do some free motion quilting um, so this has all been free motion quilting of course but this will actually just show you how you can maneuver between one point and the next so between an applique or a painted piece you don't have to cut off every single time those jump stitches which is what they're called in and I'll show you them when we get like I'm going to take it out those jump stitches are like something an embroidery machine will do and when you do it with an embroidery machine you literally just cut them off and that's what you're going to do with your free motion quilting okay so when you're when you're deciding what you want to do you can get your either you know oops, sorry about that free um, your, your blue line pen or your friction pen or whatever you want to use and you can say right well I'm going to do circles or I'm going to do little stipples or whatever you're going to do between you could just do lines <coughs> excuse me um, whatever suits for you but what I want to do between here and here because they're all circles I'm actually going to do lines now to get lines I want to work towards myself okay so I can see what I'm doing and I'm going to use the foot as a guide now they're not going to be straight lines okay just FYI hi Stella I'm not I don't do straight lines so I'm going to create my first one and stop at the edge of that next circle Oops, it is. then I'm going to go across until the edge of my foot is level with that stop that line I just stitched and that is going to be my guide so then I just go backwards and when I say backwards I'm literally just pulling the material towards myself and that will create a line okay hi Denise again travel down that stitch line that we had before until that foot is level with the line we just stitched okay and then come towards yourself whoops it is bit of a wobble and get up to that drawn line and I'm stopping okay now I want to actually come across the other side but to do that I need to turn it because I want to use this side of my ruler my, my foot I don't want to use this side and the reason being is because just in case it's different between the needle and that and the needle and that okay does that make sense just been making a sweet potato gluten free and lactose free it's now in the oh lovely nice so um, what have you missed we've just started doing some stitching around the painting I did the other day and I'm now turning it so that it's facing me because I want to work towards myself and I'm going to travel down that drawn line at the end and get my rule and uh, my foot sorry it is a ruler foot um, level with that previous stitch line come down keeping it nice and steady okay and then travel the line we stitched before around that painted bit one more stitch and then go back up just following that line 
and stopping at your drawn line. Now a bit of my drawn line has disappeared, so I'm just going to turn it around and give it a little bit of a, I lift up my foot, there we go, just so I can see what I'm going to, there we go, turn it back so I can see what I'm doing and I'm just going to come across around a little bit more doing these lines and down and across and up okay now if I go across and down again I'm sort of going to be out in the middle of nowhere oh sorry for, no I haven't brought Miss Polly and you know I might bring her in a, on the you know four five o'clock one it's it's a lot of a lot of very hard for little Miss Polly. She's 13 years of age. Um, she doesn't stand too well. She's sort of at that point where I'm looking at it going, yeah, you know, am I making that awful, horrible decision? Um, and it's a little bit cold, so I'm sort of going to wait until um, the salvo. All right, so I've just stitched that outside edge. Okay. No Miss Polly yet, I'm sorry. Lift your needle oops, up, jump over, and starting on the next one, do a couple of stitches, and follow that around in the little loopy thing it is. It's pretty cool. And the beauty of this, once we actually finish going like all the way around this you just travel down poor Miss Polly not her cuddles oh she's just she's so lovely but she's yeah I'm I am she's um, full of arthritis all those wonderful things we get when we get older a um, little bit of dementia <laughs> So I have basically done that loopy sort of one and then gone around. Um, so relaxing what you do. <laughs> sorry, I'm a tad late. That's all right, Veronica. Lift your needle up, sorry, and then jump over to that center circle. I'm glad you enjoy yourself. <laughs> and then do around this one. And I go around twice on these just to make them really push down. And then lift, come into that little tiny one, needle down. And you can see the foot is starting to lift. See how it's separated from the fabric now? Lift that up, okay. And we're going to move that over to our first dot. Now, I'm going to drop that foot again. Just a fraction. Okay. around that one, lift up, move across, oops a daze, go down that one, just make it go in there, lift up and across and down and go around. So it just keeps it consistent. You're just doing the same thing for each one. Lots of little jump stitches and when you finish you can just basically um, take it off the machine and trim those up. And because you're doing lots of tiny little stitches near each other, <laughs> it's a massive screwdriver, comes with the machine, um, you won't, you'll, it'll knot itself. You won't need to bury threads or anything like that. All right, okay, so I'm going to come over to the next one, over here, needle down, and I'm going to do the next one. All right, so to do that, I need to be facing it, okay, I'm going to do the outside first. And you can see I don't lift my hands off there doing that whole circle. I'm not lifting and turning it. Good afternoon, Yvonne. My printer just made a noise. And lift it up, start in that little point area there where two lines meet rather than on a curve. 
I don't really like starting on a curve if I can avoid it. And go around those. And the most important thing is comfort when you're doing anything like this. As soon as you feel uncomfortable, you know that you're losing some sort of control. So make sure you've got the right chair, you've got the right gloves, all that sort of thing. You've got slider mats, whatever you need to make it nice and simple for yourself. So I've lifted and I'm doing the next little step inside. Lift. up around those little tiny flowery bits, the centres, to travel along the line. Literally it is a cut and paste job. And then once I've done that I go around the whole line again, that circle, because I would have missed a little bits and pieces by travelling along. Hi Jenny. Oh that's okay. Lovely your work. Thank you. Oh look <laughs> I've been doing it for quite a while. This you know is Free motion quilting is one of those things that you really, really, truly need to practice a, a lot. All right, so lift that up. And I'm going to do that little star thing in here. So back and forth from the center out in a little star. And then needle up. Whoops, it is. Come over to your next one. Just move it over nice and slowly. And go needle down and we're going to go to the next one I'm going to show you these in a second and trim off the stuff so you can see what I'm doing it's a little bit stiff because I moved the foot down before but it will settle in a second once I push the fabric down with the stitching now I like to work where I can see so it's in front of me so I'm just going to come back to that little point there and then follow that around so if you've got a transfer pen or if you've got, you know, uh, some, some sort of pen that you can remove or it doesn't have to be removed. So if you did a, a transfer in blue, then you could use blue thread um, because transfer pens don't wash out. Um, but it gives you an idea. It's there. So you can trans transfer a design from anything um, and it will look amazing every time. So again, it's a daisy, a bit of a jump. Down one, cross, up one, down one, cross. So if you notice, if I speed up my machine, my hands tend to go a little bit faster um, because I like to keep that consistency thing. If you have large stitches, it means that your machine is either um, too slow and your hands are too fast or vice versa and your hands are too slow and machines too fast hands are too slow machines too fast all right so i've gone around that circle again jump across to the center one all right go around twice and now i'm going to actually cut off so the reason why i'm going to cut off is because i'm going to trim these little hairy bits just so you can see what i'm doing Trim them off. Make sure you've got glasses on, I can tell you. These scissors are good for that because they're so pointy that they can get in underneath those tiny little threads. Just be careful not to cut your fabric. Let's trim those off. Now, I made a decision in the break, well, while I was quilting on the long arm, um, that I would actually use this to... I thought, well, why, why am I doing... I'm going to use this to decorate another bag because I thought this would be brilliant. Um, and then I looked at the bags and thought, oh, what one will I do? So I'm going to show you at the end how to decorate your bag with this. Um, and it's another bag. I don't think I've shown you this bag before. Not for a while if I have. 
but I will show you it at the end because I'll quickly um, stitch it on it'll take five minutes to stitch it on the longest part is your decorating attaching is normally your slot like shortest amount of time okay and once this has been ironed I'll turn that on too before the end and iron these marks off you'll go oh my god that looks like a whole cloth uh, yes these are duck bills yep did you learn yeah I always learn the hard way that's the only way I find I learn some people just have to learn the hard way <laughs> won't listen um, I always learn the hard way I have trimmed into fabric before um, there we go. So I think I've got that. Got all those. Okay. So I've got a little bit of cross hatching here. Now I'm going to go back to my cross hatching by making. Might start here. I've got the edge of my foot. I thought you were making a dream catcher. It does look a little bit like it, doesn't it? There. I'm going to needle down a couple of stitches. And then go across until I get to the edge of this. Now I'm going to turn this baby so I can see it. Now what you'll find is once I've sort of got to this, I, I, I have no line to follow. And it's going to want to come right across. So I need to now utilize a ruler. What's the pen? Oh, Lynette, this is a friction pen. I bought a few extras. They were 340 I bought them from... Um, uh, do, 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 do. Office Works have them. They were three forty, so I do have some. Put I bought some extra. Um, sorry, someone's messaging me. So we do need a ruler to go across here, hence the ruler foot. So I am going to cheat because that's what I do, and I don't have a quilting ruler here. But what I do have is my um, crosshairs ruler and because it's so thick along here I can literally lay that there to get my first line okay it doesn't have any stuck stuff on the back of it because it's um, can I get yeah um, yeah sometimes you can so I'm going to just gently move this across because there's it will slip if I'm too heavy-handed and it wants to hit this here so I'm going to move it down so I get a little bit more room out of it I've moved the camera a little bit closer than normal so I have to keep the ruler away from the, the camera Yeah, you'll probably find they might be cheaper at the supermarket. But I, when I went yesterday, I did get some extras um, if the girls wanted some. So once I've got the first line there, I can pop that aside. Um, oops, a day. Sorry about that. And I can now come down this way, the width of my actual foot. So just tick, tick, tick there. Turn it towards me so I can see what I'm doing and just follow that. Now I need to just lift that foot up just because it wants to catch that. That's it. Whoops, that's a bit of a jump. And follow that down. Now if you're not straight, it doesn't matter because in the whole scheme of things I can tell you now, no one is going to go, oh my god, that's so wobbly. They're just going to go, oh, how cool are those straight lines? That's what they're going to do. All right. So I'm going to just go across a little. Even my stitches weren't even then. I don't really want to go on that side. I'm going to come across and I'm going to follow it backwards. It has got a bit of a curve to it and I'm okay that with that. So I'm just going to keep the momentum going. And like I say, if it's a little bit wobbly, eh. yeah, my old saying is the blind man would love to see it. A couple of stitches are a bit, you know, out there. And then go down and follow the next one. Might need to lift that foot up a bit. It's probably why it's pushing. 
So you probably see it jump up a little. There you go. That'll work a bit better. Oh, there you go. Safeway do have them. Thanks, Kayleen. I'd say you'd find them at Kmart and all those sort of places. All right, so you'll get to this, this stitched circle one that we've done before. Just follow that around. You can see it's a little bit high, that foot, until we get to the other side. Again, I'm just going to adjust it down a little. Freaks me out when it's a bit high. And it takes two seconds to adjust. Oh, you're on the iPad. Oh, at least you're here. That's the main thing. And then follow that down. Go across. Then back up. Okay, when you get in between these, again, you can come up, down. Just fill out that area there. So I'm just filling in the area in between. And you'll start to see it really getting some shape to it. All right, that'll really make those... Oh, I nearly got that caught. That was almost silly. I better put some pins in the corners just so I don't get the corners caught. That would have been silly, wouldn't it, Michelle? All right, just pop one in there, I think. That one's all right. This one needs to be pinned, as does the other. Try not to sew your fabric backing into itself, because that's probably annoying. <laughs> all right so i'm going to go up oops days one more and then down and you'll probably see i'll end up having to go past now again i'm going to turn it this way and i'm going to try and use that ruler again it's again it's not going to be perfect but it will be reasonably okay so let's just move it there. It'll be passed with a push. Okay. Oh, you've done that before? Yes, yeah, so have I. Um, okay, so now I'm going to stitch up the side there. I'm just going to do some freehand basting. Up oh, there we go. And stitch down here and just stitch in that area back and forwards and because I've got that line there I can sort of follow it to within a reasonable reasonable you know straightness I suppose you want to call it so if you get a wobble in it consistency is the key just make it all wobbly make it like it's meant to be there Some of your gaps are a little bit bigger than others. Make them all like that. But being freehand, this can be a little bit trickier than, say, just the normal using a ruler and, you know, being um, extremely perfect. Okay? So... I've got one bigger one there, but eh, don't care. Let's move on. So we're going to use this line and we're going to come across. And we're going to keep stitching. And what we're going to find is we're going to have this amazing looking um, quilted piece. And we can use it in a, in a, like we can use it as a quilt as you go. You can use it in a bag panel, whatever you like. A bag panel sounds good. So straight down. And if you do it in one big hit like that, like in one big sweep, you'll get a straight, a straighter line. <laughs> just move down a bit. Again, hold your hands nice and flat. And just... In one hit. Okay. Down a little. And then straight towards yourself. Now it's going to hit the side of this thing again, so I'm going to need to come down here, I'm going to need this ruler, and I'm guesstimating, it could be off on an angle, I don't know, so we'll find out. I have to keep stopping and moving it, 
otherwise it's going to move the camera. Whoops, just like that. <laughs> Sorry. Because I got it in the way. There we go. Okay. Cool. Because that it, it's that colour, it looks like Japanese rake sand. Oh, it does too. Um, so I'm going to turn it and I'm going to come up along here and travel back down, up and down, up and down. Okay, so just... Around your pin. Don't pin your pin in, like don't stitch up your pin. Because um, that could be disastrous. Holding on to that edge bit. It's a bit hard when you've got an edge. Just get a hold of that fabric underneath at least until you can get a hold of the top. I just want to lift that foot. There we go. Um, and just give it a bit of a base stitch along there. It'll get stitched within an inch of its life in a minute. Okay, yes it does. There's a nice Japanese guard into a park. Okay, there you go. So again, we're going to come straight down. And once your hands get past over here, move them down. Okay. I hate stopping on a straight, but you do need to stop once your hands get too far then move up along the edge and come back so once my hands get past here I have to stop and move them okay then down a little Keeping my hands still and down. And this also helps keep the stitches um, reasonably even if you keep the same speed up with your hands and your foot. Okay, so there you go. So we're getting there. You'll have it stitched in no time. If you would like to, you can cross hatch it very easy to cross hatch from here and it will look like a like a quarter inch cross, cross hatch the whole way across go up the side and then down Uh, yep, I ran out of bobbin. I knew I would eventually. All right, where do I put my scissors? Here they are. Uh, a bit gloomy looking, but it's not too bad. It's settled down. Um, that's the main thing because it was a little bit hairy there for a while, but it's pretty good now. I'm just going to pull that out the back just because I don't want the black showing through. And I'm going to pull it back to probably close to the edge I think because otherwise I'm going to have a join so I'm just going to do a bit of very quick reverse there we go get that back to there, trim it off so it doesn't get in my way and caught up in the bobbin ok just pop that aside yeah it's still cold here I'm still cold, I could probably go with a scarf on but it's not as bad inside out of the wind Put my bobbin up there. Get it ready for filling. There we go. Put the new one in. The bonus with this one is um, if it does its own bobbins while we're working. I don't have to stop. Alrighty, let's go back here. Little down, just going to start off. So I've grabbed that bobbin. Okay, 13. Oh, god, yeah, it's probably like that here. So up and back. If you want to use rulers, you can very well use rulers the whole way. You can make it arched, whatever you like. Oops, a days. 
bit of a wobble. She'll be right. Oh, 23 sounds beautiful. <laughs> that one got a bit close, but anyway. I tend to be a little bit more funky on the backhand, like when I go backwards. So I'm making this bigger than I need to for what I want to do with it, but that's okay because I'd rather cut it back a little bit than have it too small. So I'm just traveling down the sides. It doesn't matter because I'll end up getting cut off and then stop there. My screwdriver's getting in my way. Yeah, new to watching you online, loving it. What? Oops, a Daisy. What machine are you using? Okay, who said that? So, oh, oops, a Daisy. Brian, Brian, I am using a Jack machine. It is a uh, light industrial, uh, brilliant machine for uh, for for any straight stitching. It's perfect for that. Um, it doesn't have any other stitch but straight. Um, but you can free motion and you can stitch into leather and all that sort of stuff. It's a ripper of a machine. Um, and this machine comes with a table. It comes with all sorts of things. And it's only like $2,900. They are, it's really good value. So down that line, back up. The majority of quilters uh, or machine sewers normally use... So I've just got to press that. I'll keep up with everyone. Um, normally, only need a straight stitch um, unless you have um, the desire to do, you know, a whole heap of embroidery or buttonholes. Um, most of the time, you can get away with just a straight stitch. So I'm almost at the corner, so I'm just going to take that pin out and move it just over here. So it's still holding that backing, but it's not going to get in my my way. So I hope I answered your question, Brian. This is an A, A6F. Just if you wanted the model. Very quiet for an industrial. Ah, that little tick noise was my um, bobbin is full. So I'll just trim that off. It just stops on its own. Gosh. Okay. Keeping going. I'm just going to keep the momentum going at the moment. Um, when I come back down, I am going to stitch down that side seam. It just wants to do a little bit of lifting. Alright, let's stitch that down. You can see that in the hold right. And welcome Brian, welcome to the uh, the demo. I'm just gonna stitch this down, nice big stitches. I've slowed the machine down just so I can get some nice big stitches in there. Not that I'll be taking them out, but it just holds it down. Um, did you do an oops? What's the oops? I didn't know there was an oops. Can you wind a separate bobbin at the same time you're sewing? Yes, I can. Absolutely. So I can now empty that, take that off and put another bobbin up. And while it sews, when it actually works, like when the machine's running, it actually fills up the bobbin. I know. Cool. Hey. On a very wonky basting line. It's going to be a little bit testy up here. But like I say, that'll probably get cut off. Okay. Yes, says Kathy. Alright, I'm going to actually 
cut this one off because I want to go back down the other side. Oh, beauty, didn't have to undo that. So I'm going to start from here and bury my food. It's a great machine. I love the fact that it's all metal. It is table included and it's on your wish list, I think. <laughs> So, yes, so it has two thread stands there, Judy. Yep, so you can wind up any thread you want. If you want to do a variegated one, what's it getting put on there? Table. Um, you can do whatever you want. Whoops, it does. There we go. Got that a little bit caught. A little bit of a puckering there, but eh. Let's not stress over it. probably going to get cut off anyway so we'll see how we go. I keep hitting that. I'm going to just move it back a bit so I can stop hitting it. <laughs> All right, I'll just pop that over there see if it'll roll over it. Again, haven't I? Sorry. Okay. Yeah, it's a great idea. It's a fabulous idea. All right, so I'm going to go to the edge of this one. Just lift that up. And the last one's going to go past, so I should be able to just wing it. And just come straight down. And then fill in this little gap. Back again. I did a Stella. <laughs> Sweet potato bake has just finished cooking. Nice. Nice. I'm just going to go up. I'm going the opposite way, but it should just work just fine. And to get over here, I'm literally going to just travel that line of um, my previous stitch. I'm not cutting off. The less cutting off, the, the better if you can avoid it um, with this sort of thing. And get to there. So my, my, my um, foot is level with the previous stitch lot. And then just go straight down, up the side and straight towards yourself down that stitch line straight down and like I say if you want these to be immaculately straight and like you know perfect OCD issues you need to use a ruler okay so um, not using a ruler will, will create uh, different uh, different gaps in between it but I'm okay with that I'm not sort of freaking out because it's got little different bits here and there that's no big deal in the whole scheme of things that's the least of my problems uh, just a side note this thread I'm using is Rosant top and bottom this machine tends to love 50 weight Rosant um, just don't use cheap overlocker thread on it. That doesn't really go too well with the overlocker thread. It's too nasty. So you can see how quick you can get at this. Just up and back. Okay, I'm going to, yeah, I love that too. Happy birthday for your daughter, Pat. Yes, happy birthday. I'm going to come around here and I'm just going to do the other side of this one, which means I might knock the camera again. I'm going to try not to. Just across here. Back down. So what I'm doing is a bit of a gap filler in between these. I'm using them as my stop and like so I can travel around to get to another point. 
that sort of thing. It just seems to um, help rather than doing a lot of cutoffs. But like I say, if you want perfect, you need to use a ruler. You have really got the knack of that jack. Oh, I love this jack. It didn't take me long. I don't think it would take anyone long. Um, I'm just going to come out and travel down there. And then I'm going to go back up. This is the only one I'm going to do the same line twice on that point. Just so I could get up here and travel along again. And you can't even tell I did that. Okay, we get there. This is where you might wish you've done bigger gaps between <laughs> between them, because all of a sudden you're like, damn, this is taking forever. Um, but it's not really. It's it's happening quite quickly. We'll have this whole thing quilted in no time, and you know you can see just going backwards and forwards. Get you a really cool look. Oops, it is a bit skinny there. Do you know what I love about this? And I'm, I'm Michelle is going great with her jacket, isn't she? So I thank you. Um, and you know what I love about this is that I haven't broken my thread once, and I say knocking on wood. Um, and it's just an absolute machine. It just loves this. I love the fact that I can roll it out of the way and put it in a corner and do whatever I need to do then just roll it back out and it just it's so good oh look Kathy it is just amazing it's worthwhile saving up for honestly it really is when I get my dealership I'm going to have it that people can use their afterpay that they can I'm going to cut that off that they can actually um, also, um, what do they call it, um, lay by them and all that sort of stuff so that everyone gets a chance. Oh, you only won $9. Um, so everyone gets a chance to, to be able to own one of these. Look at that. Look at that. How cool is that? So I'm just going to iron off these lines. I'll just zoom back out again. There we go. Just while you're... Looking at the pretties. Oh. So that's what it is. How cool is that? Yeah, I'm going to have it so that everyone has the opportunity to, to have one of these. Because these machines are just amazing. Doesn't that look awesome? Wait till I take those lines off. Like these black marks off around the things. I'll show you. Just wait for that iron to heat up a little. Bring her on over here. Get rid of my rubbish. I got stuff everywhere. I'll just pop my big jacks over there. Are you nice and warm yet? Mm, you are. Okay, is that the right side? Yes, that's the that's the right side. So let's take out these. Take these out. Yep. I'm going to have to trim a couple of little threads here. So I've used a grey thread with a black underneath. So you might see a few little bits of um, the thread pop up. But, you know, I'm okay with that. I'm not really, I'm not that angly retentive as you will know. <laughs> so while it's here I'll just give it a quick once over and um, 
and then I'm going to just get my little scissors a little snips here and there oh you blind man I'd love to see it hey so with those there you see um, you're going to finish the painting off or leave it as it is I'm gonna finish I'm gonna put some paint dots hang on little bits off what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the these dots here are going to be painted there and it's going to have a dot of paint in the middle there and that will hide that little bit of black um, and then that will be finished um, but I can't do that actually I might not even be able to do that I might have to where's my permanent marker here we go Right, we're going to do a black dot in here, just like that. Make it look like it's painted. One in here, colouring it in. Oh, I know, I'm cheating. And then we're going to go in this one. This one. Because I want to sew it on now. <laughs> So that'll take away some of that because when when you're doing free motion you're sitting in one spot for so long if you sit there too long you'll end up with um like the black thread from underneath coming through so that's the little dots that i've put in there um and i'm pretty happy with that just gonna get um gonna heat set that just make it set I was starting to watch, so is that big circle painted? Yes, love, yes. I painted that um, yesterday or the day before. Okay. Okay, all right. She's set, baby set. All right, so that's how it's going to look. Now, in saying all that, I have this. This is called a showcase bag. And when I look at this bag, so I'm just going to, doesn't it look awesome? I'm just going to move the camera there for you and just set that up. Knock you sideways, see? Eh? So when I look at this bag, it's got a really big open face, like with the plastic. And I'm like, well, how am I supposed to decorate that? Well, I could decorate around the outside of it, fine. But I went, eh, boring. So that's the back. And that is going to go in there like that. That is going to sit behind there. I'm going to sew that down. So what I need to do is to measure. Measure. Um, if I grab one, where is it? There it is. It'll tell me the size. So the block showcase bag, they're $44.95. It is 14 by 14 inches. Okay. So I'm going to trim it back to around about 13 and a half inches square. So let's do that. I need this. I need that. I need my ruler. I need to pop that up a little. Pins out of the way. And that there. Yeah, it's pretty cool, hey. So I'm gonna find a gonna create a straight edge, just um, so you know. This is much bigger than 14 inches square. So I'm gonna have a little bit of excess. I'm okay with that. So I'm gonna cut a bit closer. I'm sort of measuring. I'm doing it about, if I go one and a half, so one and a half, two inches from that painted stitch one. I can always cut it back, like I say, make it too big. You can cut back, yep, so 13 and a half is... And I love that it's got the table. 
I can see where 13 and a half is, is here. All right. And then I go this way, put my ruler, I want to move it to the 13 and a half inch spot. Find my little doodah. There it is. And I'm just cutting that. So all I've done is rimmed it so it is reasonably squarish. <laughs> now, this is where the fun begins. Now, if you wanted to, you can paint it more, you could applique it, you can do whatever you like. Um, being yours, it'll be yours. All right, so to decorate this one, I've decided to do it on the inside so it's going to be inside like that so now I just need to position it where I want it to be and I want it to be right there so what's going to happen sorry about that, is it's going to be a little bit cumbersome I'm going to trim off that corner I'm going to In that there just inside of that zip I'm going to go from the front so I can see what I'm doing just make sure your zipper is out of the way so I'm just going to move that down so you can see what I'm doing there we go okay so I'm finding I've trimmed that corner off a little bit there okay I'm moving the zipper out of the way, but I'm lining it up with the edge of that bag, okay, just like that. So I'll get another pin. You could use clips if you've got bigger clips, just to hold that there. Put the zipper out of the way. Bring it up to the edge. And just pin that, keep your fingers out of the way too, by the way, just saying. There. You are. And get down to the bottom. Sorry, I've just got to flatten it out. There. You are. And pin in. Okay. Along the top. going to push out that zipper right out of the way. I want this to line up right with the edge of that zipper where the zipper meets the plastic and that's going to go through there. So just keep going along there like that. Looks great. Yeah it does. Yeah it will. It'll look really good. I mean you can decorate yours with anything and again these are all you know they're all, all the yazi bags are made from the same group of men who work in the factory they all work with the singer sewing machines the, the whole lot the zippers the everything's put in with those industrial singers um oops does that slip down I'll back up. so you know that they've been made um with those old machines so when you get to the other side because you've cut a half an inch small um, you, you're going to have a little bit of a gap there which is fine keep that zipper out of the way so including like you could actually um, also clip those zippers so just opening up this little reader Keep your zippies as well, just so that you've got them out of the way because you do not want to sew that down into the process. Okay. And there. So 
let's turn it this way and push that up. What time is your next demo of sales? It is at oh, four, I think I start. Just going to pin those stickers out of the way. Um, I think it's four, Judy, off the top of my head. We go for a little while with that one. Uh, going to have to go. Be right back. No worries, guys. So get a pin. Just clip it in. Clip it in. And just if you're going to have a fight with it, just make sure it's worth the win. <laughs> this will be worth the win. Strap on. It's going to look really lovely, um, Gidget. I think it'll look nice when it's finished. Um, I've got it sort of sitting just off the centre. It will be all looking like it's quilted behind a plastic, or, you know, cover. Sorry, I'm going to have to just sit that that way. Okay. All right. So push that down there. Make sure it's nice and flat. Um, be careful with ironing because the plastic does go right up underneath that. You don't want to um, burn it <laughs> as such. So I'm just going to put my hand under here and pin that in a little. Turn my pin. Just bent my pin. Thanks, Judy. Okay, so it's going to have two lots of stitching. It's going to have the one around the outside, and it's also going to have one around here. Now, if you want to do decorative stitching, you'll have to do that on, on a machine other than a jack. All right, because the jacks do not have, or this one does not have a decorative stitch. I'll just move that away. And I need to create some space because I'm going to be swinging this baby around. All right, so um, I'm going to start on the um, inside one. Um, now I've still got my free motion foot on. I'm going to take that off before I get even anywhere near starting. So I'll take that one off. Let's pop this baby back on. And I reckon we'll pop that one on. It's got a flat foot. Alright, so let's take this off. I'll just um, I'll move the camera in a second, ladies. Nearly three o'clock. So I should be done in about 15. There we go, move that there. Hopefully, I don't smack the camera as I'm going. Put that way. Lifting that up, Michelle. There we go. It's a monster of a screwdriver, I know. The other thing I like about these gloves, when you're using screwdrivers, it takes the pressure. Just make sure that that is in. It might snap down because I've got it halfway up. No, all good. Alrighty. Now, let's do it. So, let's start with the inside one. I haven't changed threads. I'm still, oops, it is, up there. Still got the white thread on or grey thread on. So I'm going to pop that right there. There is a stitch line there already. And I'm going to put that down. Fluff. And we're going to stitch from one point to the next. 
just on that line and I do need to change that to two and a half because I do want it to actually stitch not just sit in one spot so let's go If you like, you can do you can like do two, three different rows of stitching. It's up to you. I'm just watching the camera. <laughs> it's going to get hit. One more stitch. There we go. And then we're going to lift and turn. This on your lap. Oh, that's a beautiful stitch. Nice. And we're just going to travel down here. <laughs> and this will help hold it down and this will be the hard part oops it does needle down this will be the hard part because pressing buttons because it's going to be in underneath the machine and just oops it is. Oh, stop moving. I'm gonna move that down. Yeah. We're gonna travel across from one point to the next. I can get it started. Doesn't it? Just sound beautiful. Oh, righty then. I know. And off we go. We do this last one. Just holding that plastic as tight as I can. I did stick it under some things heavy. Sorry, you're going to have that in the way. My apologies. Um, before I started, just to help flatten it out. Because um, this one I've had out of its packaging for a while. <laughs> I've got a bit bashed around as they do and I get up to here and I'm going to do a cut off and lift and that is now stitched on in the center I know so let's now do the sides um, I've got it that one now just going to Make sure that I have all that stitched in. Yes. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch in around about. Here we go. Just pulling that out a little, just so it's a little bit flatter. I'm going to start on this side. And I'm using the, the width of my foot as an idea. Oops, the day's wrong button. And we go forward and back. And let's just stitch a quarter inch in. Keeping that zipper out of the way, girls. Do not get that zipper in the way. I'm just trying to keep that down out of the way for you. So you can make this as decorative or as plain as you like. You don't have to decorate it. You can just decorate the outsides. But these bags are designed so that you can make it, again, your own. Now this is going to get up to a nice little corner where it wants me to go around in a corner. So I don't really want to. <laughs> I want to go right up in there. And grab it, turn, oh you little bugger, <laughs> I just did a cut off, um, turn and learn me, pressing the button too close, there we go, there we go, alright let's start again, and going forward, come on that's a girl, Alright, keep that zipper out of the way. Oh, 
Now you can do double single lines, you can do a decorative stitch, whatever suits you. For me this was enough. Sometimes you just need it to look cute and looks like it's, you know, it's your own. I've got that little Yazi tag there. Just try and stitch that around that. Way. Try and not knock that camera, it just wants to go in right to that camera. It really does. Oh, wait, just don't be doing that. Okay, got the pin out of the way. There we go. And let's go down. So I figured out what the reason why I was having issues before when I was sewing was because I had the wrong foot on and it wanted to wouldn't let me sew over that um that rip rack, it just sort of cracked it at me. So the reason being was because I had a foot that wasn't flat underneath, so that's why I kept getting caught. Just letting you know. So it was definitely a me thing. Oops, it does. Wait, stop it. Alright, so it's coming really, really close to that edge, keeping that zip way out of the way. Got it nice and flat. And I can feel where that thing ends, so I'm going to lift. Just move that out of the way. I think a few domestic machines are going to find going tough if you've broken needles and threads. You would definitely use an, uh, a um, denim needle, but it should go through this quite easily. If you want to be a little bit um, more mindful of that, you might want to just do one um, layer of wadding just um, to... Uh, make it less thick, if that makes sense. So, I am going right here. Alright. Oh, I pulled the head off the pin again. I wish I'd stopped doing that. Stupid thing. <laughs> it's going to have to stay there until I get it out. I've got that in the way. Alright. So this has like a little bar there, so I'm just using that as a guide. You'll find something with your machine that gives you a guide of where you can and can't go. And denim needles will do the job fine, or even a double needle. Yeah, a double needle would be great. Um, because a double needle will also give you that decorative look. Need to go one or two more and lift. There we go. Come on, lift around, turn, turn, turn. Zip arm, make sure it's out of the way. My little box of doodahs, get that pin out. And I'm wondering whether I might be not over enough. I might just go back down. Lift. And a couple more stitches, that'll do. Now lift. Um, so it down for you, so you can see. Hopefully I don't create any pinches or anything. And get to the end and do a cut off. Right, fingers crossed. Everyone's saying a prayer. Okay. All right. We are in like Flynn. Alrighty. Okay. I haven't stitched any zipper in. I don't even need to. I mean, I could trim if I wanted to. Um, but it doesn't really need it. You might need to do a little bit of trimming because the, the fabric underneath is not a batik, so it might fray a little bit. Um, but I've caught it all the way around. Oh, except for there. I missed that little bit there. So I might have to go back in there. If you do miss a little bit, just mark it um, where it is. So that's it there. 
So that would be a good reason for me to do a double stitch. I don't have this bag. Oh no, I didn't. I haven't shown this bag before. So I'm going to just trim off some of those hairies. If you've got a, um, what do they call them, those uh, scissors have got the, the wrinkly look to them. What are they called? I can't remember the name of them. Anyway, they will help if you've got a jagged edge. Um, so I'm going to go around one more time and that'll help catch that little bit there that I missed. So again, I am going to, oh, I can, oh no, I need that pin in there. So I'm going to go lift. Ta -da. I'm going to come in the width of that foot, just the foot. Pinking shears, that's the one. Thank you very much. I knew someone had known better than me. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to go in there. Wait, get out of the way. Lift. Thank you, Pat. I have the one this morning. Oh, yes, yes, that's a, that's a different one again. So this one here is a bit deeper. I'll show you a little bit more about it in a minute. Um, and you can do a double line on the inside too. That might help. The baggy and the reason why she's going slow is because I've set it to free motion speed. Sorry about that. That was my bad. Eh, eh, eh. Try very hard not to stitch in the wrong spot. Oops, Michelle. Stop pressing buttons. I do have moments, me and the machine have a bit of an issue, but other than that, we're pretty good. <laughs> we have a discussion every now and then because I'm still learning. <laughs> She's like, no, I'm doing it right. And I'm like, seriously, can't you just change it? No, I want to do it this way. All right, then. Yes, you were right. It does look better that way. It does work better that way. The machine knows best. So I'm doing a double row and like I say I'm sort of guessing I haven't marked you can mark if you want to and just mark your your quarter inch in or draw a line use a ruler whatever you like really there's no right and wrong so I'm just going to come in there and cut off then I'm going to lift and I'm going to come around this side like use the edge of that foot come here in you go and then we're going to go off and I'm going to stitch this down, lift up. Like I say, you want to use decorative, go decorative. You want to use um, bright orange thread, do that too. You know, it's all, it's all up to you. Alright, lift. Double needle will avoid you having to go around twice, like I am. But this will help keep it less, because um, it's a little bit baggy in the top there, it's just the way it's made. So that will help settle that down a little. Just trim off that starting one there. Lift and turn, so bear with me. There we go. Oh, that was lucky. And all I have to do here at this point is press the cut off, get up the foot, and I have that done. Now I'm going to move the camera back and I'm going to move it up. I'm going to zoom out, make sure I'm zoomed out. All right, I'm okay, so there you go. That's it there. Okay, now if you want, you can overlock the edges of it first. Probably would look, you know, a little bit cleaner. Um, but in saying that, I think a no, a no fray product would probably help too. I mean, it's not going anywhere. It's just got that little bit of a fray thing happening because I didn't um, do off the sides of it. And being a non batik fabric, it's going to have that little fray bit there. Alright, so the inside looks like that. 
so yep it looks great doesn't it there you go so it's all quilted okay you can paint as much as you like you can quilt as much as you like but this is a showcase bag and to give you a, a i've got two pink one red one green and three i three maybe no two two aqua i think yeah two aqua so oh and i've got this green one if anyone wanted this one they could have this one as well um, this is it here. It's a block showcase bag. It is 2.8 inches high. Um, the reason why they put the, that on there is if you wanted to have your, your block showcased. But if you don't and you want to keep it a bit secretive and a little bit more, you know, that's mine. I got off hairy legs. Um, the way to do it is to decorate it like that. You can also decorate down here. You can just stitch down some um, of that, um, what do they call it, uh, rickrack or something like that. You can do anything you want. Um, if you want to use more colours, you can go for it. Um, but that is all completed. So that is the showcase bag. Um, this is a 14 by 14 inch, so it'll hold up to a 14 inch block. Um, but look at the height of it. And it's double zippered okay so i've only got the i've got this one and another one in green um decorated a red pink uh two uh two pink and two aqua so and it's 44.95 so it's a little bit dearer than the other and if i show you since it's not included you know that yep. uh, could i see the other the other one beside it oh yep can I have an aqua? Yeah, sure. So that's it there. So the other one is... Do, do, do. Did I put it away? Hang on. Pat can I have an aqua one. Yes. I'll write your name on that, Pat, straight away. Pat Low. Okay. Debbie, I will show you the other one. I think I buried it. Oops, guys. I did what I said I didn't want to do, and that was drop all those things. I'll get them in a minute. Okay, that's all right. Um, they're 44, 44.95 Gidget. So I'm just having a look at the, uh, yep, I've got that. So that's it there. This one is Stella's. And this one here has the side gusset. This is your project bag, and it's a Velcro, okay? So that two Velcro one, that is the project bag that we showed before. This one here has a handle at the top so you can carry it, just like that. And it's zippered all the way around. Did you what colour? I've got green, red, pink and aqua. Or you could have the one with the decoration in it. Up to you. Okay. <laughs> Deb, don't be sorry. It's all good. All right, so that is the showcase bag. All right, so there you go. I like it. Hmm. Um, and if you wanted to, if if you wanted to, um, aqua, yep. If you didn't, it's like if you got this bag and you wanted to, you could easily unstitch a pink and an aqua. Yep, sure. No worries, Debbie. Um, might not have an aqua. I can probably give you, unless Gidget wants a green. Um, I'd have to order the other aqua one in, Debbie. So that's your green. And I'll show you that that's that. Oh, I've got two pink. So pink. Um, and I've got a red. Janine, sure. Janine, how are you going, love? Hope you're doing well. Sure. Janine rounds. So nope. Gidget's gonna have the green. Um, so Gidget. And we've got Deb. Chell. Thanks, Stella. Looks good, doesn't it? Deb Chell. Easy done. Nope, got it, Deb. I've got your um 
there are, I've, I've only got now, one, two, three, I've got a pink one and this green one left in stock um, unless I have to order them. So um, if anyone else is wanting them, I do have these two, but one is already decorated. If you wanted to change that, you would have to, look, literally it's two rows there and two rows here around, quite easy to undo it, especially if you've got your little electric one. <laughs> no worries guys um, thank you again for joining me I really appreciate your time I have a bag one coming up soon and it's not a Yazi bag we're going to make a bag oh, scary I know over two videos so we'll have a little break in between and then later on tonight at 7 o'clock we're going to go live with a, um, a sale well I have some fabric still on sale that I need to show you and um, also I have some of the embellishment stuff that I use from Yazi in the, um, the uh, what do they call it, the um, crazy patchwork. Look, I have a brain. Blech. So thank you again for joining me. Um, if anyone does want the, the one that's already been done, they want to add to it, you're welcome to. Um, if not, I'm happy to keep it because um, never can have too many bags. Anyone who says they've got too many bags just not cricket you're yeah, wearing yeah you can do that all right just come in and say hello debbie we'd love to chat see you soon guys thanks again for joining me and I, I'm, I'm glad i've um i've shown you something different bye ladies